I've received a lot of requests for a shootout between the Hoka Skyward X and the Mizuno Neo Vista. So today, these two super trainers are going head to head. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started with those disclosures. This video is in partnership with my friends over at Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me the Hoka Skyward X and the Mizuno Neo Vista for the purpose of review. However, they haven't told me what to say, they don't have any editorial privileges, and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. But that said, you can pick up a pair of the Hoka Skyward X for $225 and all of the Mizuno Neo Vista for $180 at Roadrunner Sports. Of course, I'll place links in the show notes below in case you want to pick up either or both pairs for yourself. Alright guys, I've got to be honest, I wasn't sure about about how these two shoes compare and if they compare well enough to actually do a full-on shootout. But I guess that just goes to show that I have to listen to my viewers who actually requested it because these two shoes are actually very comparable. Okay, so let's get started with the Hoka Skyward X. Now we've already discussed the price right off the bat. You know that the Hoka Skyward X is 25% more than the Mizuno Neo Vista. But Put that in the back of your mind for now. Don't let that cloud your thoughts. Okay, in the men's version, the Hoka Skyward X has 48 in the heel, 43 in the forefoot, and in the women's version, we have 46 in the heel, 41 in the forefoot, both for a five millimeter drop. The Mizuno Neo Vista has 44 and a half in the heel, 36 and a half in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. Now, both these shoes do fit true to size, but I have found that across the board, I have to drop half a size in Hoka. So I am wearing a US men's size 13 in the Mizuno and a 12 and a half in the Hoka. And in Hoka, except in ratios, I am always a 12 and a half. The ratios, I have to go up to my normal size of 13. So because of the size difference, we're really not comparing apples to apples, but the actual size of the shoe is the same. You know what I'm saying? It's just the numbers that are different. But to confuse it even more, Hoka provides a sample weight in the US men's size 10. And in the US men's size 10, the Hoka Skyward X tips the scale at 11.3 ounces or 320 grams. In the US men's size 9, the Mizuno Neo Vista tips the scale at 9.4 ounces or 266 grams. However, because I neither have the size 10 or the size 9, we're going to compare the size that I actually wear in both shoes. And in my size, the Hoka Skyward X tips the scale at 13.1 ounces or 371 grams and the Mizuno Neo Vista tips the scale at 11.7 ounces or 331 grams. So quick calculation on my head that makes the Hoka Skyward X about 12.1% heavier than the Mizuno Neo Vista. So guys at this point I know I can read your mind I know what you're thinking the Hoka Skyward X is both more expensive and heavier than the Mizuno Neo Vista. Is the Hoka Skyward X going to turn it around? You have to wait to the end of the video to find out. By the way thanks for watching and if you like anything about this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed consider doing so. Anyway, back to the shoes. Both of these shoes are, I guess, technically super trainers. Although the Hoka Skyward X really hasn't been marketed that way, but if we think of what actually makes a super trainer, we've got over the maximum stack art of 40 millimeters, which is what World Athletics sets as the maximum height that you could compete in. But honestly, no one is competing in either of these shoes. And there is usually a plate in them. I can think of one example where there isn't a plate in a super trainer. But for what it's worth, I do consider both of these super trainers. So let's get started with the Skyward X and we'll start at the top, we'll work our way down. And let me hold that up and you can see this super plush heel collar. Like there's a lot of padding. The step-in feel is super nice in the Skyward X. It feels like the shoe is soft like a slipper. It wraps around your foot. There's a lot of padding and it feels really good. The heel counter is super rigid. In fact, we have this overlay coming around the back, just giving a lot of rigidity right back here. And needless to say, because of this over-engineered heel collar here in the back, we're getting a superb lockdown. No heel slip in the Skyward X whatsoever. Let's just switch over to the Mizuno Neo Vista. Just by looking at it, you can see totally different shoe. The heel collar is one layer of knit so no additional padding around the heel collar of the Neo Vista. We do have a similar kind of elf's ear flare to the back same on the Skyward X. The Skyward X does not have a heel pull but the Neo Vista does so if you're into a heel pull your decision has just been made. But back to the heel counter. The heel counter on the Neo Vista is it's quite thin or not thin but it's quite pliable. In fact I can press it down like this. Now it's not just the knit. Mizuno has added some structure to this heel collar just to make it more rigid than the rest of the knit upper and I think it works very well because I also didn't have any heel slip in the Neo Vista, which I'm a little surprised at because sometimes when I have an entire knit upper like this, the knit upper is a little loose. Now, speaking of uppers, the Mizuno Neo Vista is using a soft knit upper and I think Mizuno has done pretty well with this, especially because it's all one piece. We've got different weaves of the upper to give it a little structure and there are very few overlays. You can see the Mizuno running bird here on the lateral side. There's an underlay coming around the toe just to keep that off your toes, let your feet breathe a little bit. We've got some very small plastic or rubber inserts here, which give an extra eyelet in case you need to do the lace lock method. And then we do have this little rubber circle here on the back. It's very thin. You can feel both sides of it. I think that's just a little branding. Doesn't actually do anything. So soft knit upper on the Mizuno. On the Hoka, we're using a flat knit upper. Now, 
Both of these are knit, but the difference is night and day, right? The flat knit upper on the Hoka Skyward X is a lot more traditional looking. So we've got the upper and then we've got the padding on the inside. Just like on the Neo Vista, we're using different weaves of the knit in order to give a little structure, but the Skyward X is using a few more overlays than the Neo Vista. We have underlays and overlays coming around the toe box, got the Hoka branding here on the side, and Hoka is using some reinforcement coming along their eyelid chain, which again is quite traditional. Most shoes do have this. Heading back over to the Neo Vista, Mizuno has tied in a kind of shock cord material as the eyelid chains, and then they've sewed it into the upper and left little openings where they have laced the laces through them. It's actually pretty low key and I think an excellent solution to the eyelid chain so you're not having that additional weight from covering the eyelid chain in some kind of overlay. The tongue on the Skyward X is very traditional, it's quite padded. We have a lace loop right on the front and the tongue is not gusseted. Now in order to increase the midfoot lockdown on the Skyward X, Hoka has included two bands and they're on the inside and they're not attached to the tongue but they're attached to this red part on my colorway right here. So basically when your foot goes in and you tighten down the laces, those bands on the inside get tightened with the laces so the Skyward X gives you an excellent midfoot lockdown. It's really very good and even though the tongue wasn't gusseted because of the lace loop here I didn't have any tongue migration on the Skyward X. Coming over to the Neo Vista, I seem like a broken record, but because this is a one piece upper there really is no tongue. So the tongue is just one layer of knit just like the rest of the shoe. However, Mizuno has included a little piece of rubber right here on the top of the tongue, and I thought this was just branding. But come to find out that when I tie my laces, I tie my laces right about here on this little piece of rubber. So this little piece of rubber is actually preventing any lace bite. It's a good solution. I found that the Neo Vista did give me a good midfoot lockdown. However, when I compared it to the Hoka Skyward X, the lockdown wasn't as good. I did prefer the lockdown on the Skyward X quite a bit more. Although that's not to talk bad about the Neo Vista, because until I wore them at the same time to run, it wasn't really noticeable. What was noticeable, however, was look at the eyelet chain on the Neo Vista. Because this is one piece upper, when I tie the laces together, I do get a little bit of bunching here in the middle where the excess knit of the upper kind of overlaps. It looks a little funny. Can you even see that? Yeah, yeah, you, there you can. It looks a little funny, but it actually made no difference. That didn't give me any hot spots, and the shoe continued to feel good. Uh, I didn't have any of those same problems with the Hoka. Obviously, it's a little more of a traditional fit. The tongue is separate from the upper, so when I tightened down the laces, I got a better midfoot lock down and there was no bunching whatsoever. Still, I would say that both shoes felt about the same on my foot. It was only when I was really thinking about it and running with them that I concluded the Skyward X had a better midfoot lockdown. As far as the feeling of the toe box, I'd say both are identical. If I hold them up, they, they do look quite similar, right? And as far as width, yeah, my toes were wiggling around as much in one as the other. Okay, let's come down to the midsole and we're going to start with the Hoka Skyward X. Now, the Hoka Skyward X is using a dual density midsole. We have a Piba foam here on the top and then we have a super critical EVA rocker frame. So ultimately, when your foot goes into the Skyward X, the first layer of foam that you're feeling is Piba, and then we have a super critical EVA frame to give it a little more structure. The Mizuno Neo Vista is using a brand new foam. It's called their Energy Next or NXT, and it's a super soft foam, and I actually really like it. Now, both of these shoes, the Skyward X and the Neo Vista, are plated. The Hoka Skyward X is using a carbon fiber plate, and it's a little different because the plate in the Hoka Skyward X is bowed slightly in the middle, and Hoka says that that gives a feeling of suspension or a suspended feeling, which sounds a lot like marketing hype, but I gotta say, that suspended feeling is actually how I would describe it. The kind of soft suspension that you get from that convex carbon fiber plate actually feels really good. Now, the Mizuno Neo Vista, on the other hand, is using a glass fiber reinforced nylon. It's their wave plate. It's the plate that they put in a lot of their shoes. And if we come down to the bottom, you can see this giant void here in the middle of the Neo Vista, and we've got this nylon plate all the way down. The Skyward X, on the other hand, yeah, we can see these two bars of the carbon fiber plate coming across their void. Of course, the void isn't quite as big on the Skyward with X as it is on the Neo Vista, but this isn't a competition. Actually, it is a competition. You know, I'm not sure if a shoe's voids are something that should be competing against each other. But anyway, carbon fiber plate, nylon plate. Now let's talk about rigidity. And we're gonna come back to the outsole rubber in just a second, but the Hoka Skyward X is, guys, it is remarkably stiff. Like it's really tough for me to bend up, but I'm still getting a little bit of flex. Not like the Adidas Prime X2 Strung, which is like a brick, it's impossible to bend. But in comparison, the Mizuno Neo Vista is actually, it's stiff, but it's nowhere near as stiff as the Skyward X. Like I'm able to bend it quite easily. And that is going to come through on the ride, but we're not at the ride yet. We'll get there in a second, but let's come down to the outsole rubber. We can see there is a lot of rubber on both shoes. And at the making of this video, I think my mileage in both these shoes are about the same. And it looks 
looks like the Neo Vistas rubber is wearing down a little bit more than the rubber on the Skyward X. Yeah, that's definitely the case. But I would also say that the rubber on the Neo Vista is a lot softer than the rubber on the Skyward X, which I also think is a bonus for Mizuno because they have been using that G3 outsole rubber, which I find very hard. Okay, so let's talk about ride. Guys, I've enjoyed running in both of these shoes, but it did take me running with one shoe on each foot to really pass out the differences. And if I'm totally honest, these shoes are not that far apart. I actually expected to feel more of a difference just because the difference in the stack height. Like my pair of the Skyward X has 43 millimeters in the forefoot. The Neo Vista only has 36 and a half in the forefoot, but I didn't notice that part of it. What I did notice and what struck me immediately was that when I was walking, the Neo Vista seemed much more soft. It has a much softer heel than on the Skyward X. However, when I started running and my footfall landed just slightly further forward, that feeling of softness in the Neo Vista went away and they felt very similar. Like the softness factor felt very similar. Now at the making of this video, I haven't done any workouts in both of these shoes and I probably won't. But for a super trainer, I want them to do pretty well at workouts if I had to use them for that in a pinch. And in my experience, when I've done strides in these shoes, they both pick up the pace well when they have to. Now, keep in mind, strides are very short pickups. So I'm really not having a chance to let my feet fatigue or get used to turning over the heavier weight of the Skyward X. However, when I was wearing one shoe on each foot, it did seem like the Hoka Skyward X were just slightly snappier than the Neo Vista. And it wasn't until I came back and actually sat down to make this video and I was doing the old, the old twist test that I realized how much stiffer the Skyward X were over the Neo Vista. And I have to say, that that is the reason that the Skyward X feel a little snappier. It's just a more rigid shoe. So when you load that plate, it's going to feel a little springier. I also like the feeling of the carbon fiber plate, the bowed part of it, the suspended feeling of the Skyward X. But then I started wondering, even though I'm thinking about the Skyward X and thinking it's just a little snappier than the Neo Vista, that's me going out for a very quick test in both these shoes. I'm not sure that that extra snappiness is going to translate over time because the Hoka Skyward X is 12.1% heavier and we can't forget 25% more expensive than the Neo Vista. Like the tiny bit of improvement in snappiness in the Skyward X, I don't think is enough to offset the cost and the weight of the Neo Vista. So if you are thinking about getting a pair of the Hoka Skyward X, I would never steer you away. I have really enjoyed running in this shoe. But if you are concerned about weight, if you're concerned about money, you are getting a really solid deal and a great shoe in the Neo Vista. And just to end it on a note that means absolutely nothing, I like the way the Mizuno Neo Vista looks more than the Hoka Skyward X. So now it's your turn. Have you run in either the Hoka Skyward X or the Mizuno Neo Vista? If you have, how do you think they compare? If you haven't and you're thinking of picking one up, which one do you fancy? And with that, it's Matt B. This has been a shootout between the Hoka Skyward X and the Mizuno Neo Vista. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple days.